The disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 left many people baffled by the fact that airlines typically don't constantly track air airplanes. But have no fear. A couple of aviation geeks have a website that allows everybody from car service to air traffic controllers to track planes. The WSJ's middle seat columnist, Scott McCartney, is here to discuss. Welcome to you, Scott. Good to see you, Lee. Good to see you as always. Wow, I'm surprised. Before we talk about the website, why don't airlines track every single movement of their flights? Well, the basic problem is what do you do over oceans? You have to have a satellite link with the, with the aircraft, um, and, uh, and that's expensive and, and difficult to do. And in many uh, parts of the world, um, um, it just doesn't exist. Okay, so Flight Radar 24, however, has found a way to do it. Uh, this is now the go-to source in global airplane traffic, tracking. How do they do it? Well, they they have some gaps just like everybody else over over oceans, and they're working on that. Um, but it's a pretty incredible story of two entrepreneurs, uh, two two uh, hobbyists really, um, in Sweden who um, realized that that modern aircraft, uh, airplanes that are made, most airplanes manufactured in the last ten years, um, and many that have been retrofitted um, with equipment called uh, ADSB, Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, and so the air plane actually sends out a signal with its location and a whole lot of other data. And they realized they could get uh, a couple of receivers, put them in their houses in Stockholm, start tracking airplanes over Stockholm. They had a, a ticket selling website um, and the flight tracking became very popular. All of a sudden, volunteers um, nearby were asking for receivers and could they uh, add to it. Um, they started putting receivers in Greenland and other places so you could track uh, transatlantic traffic, other, uh, other things. And, uh, and several years later, they have uh, 7,500 receivers around the world, all housed in volunteer homes, um, on some towers, uh, even on a ship. And, uh, and it's a very useful, very extensive flight tracking network. And a lot of people depend on them. When German Wings 9525 crashed, French investigators actually called Flight Radar 24, right? Yeah, so, so the aircraft actually broadcasts a whole lot of data, and the Flight, 20, Flight Radar 24 uh, receivers have a memory card in them that stores five hours of memory. They were actually able to download the memory card from a receiver that was just 50 miles from that crash site, and and it uh, and 48 hours later they had isolated the the data from that flight, and it it tells you cockpit settings, including autopilot settings. This is something uh, air traffic controllers at uh, London Heathrow uh, use all the time, but. Uh, uh, this data was was on the card, and they used that. That was the first indication that the co-pilot had um, moved the autopilot altitude selector um, all the way down to 100 feet so that the airplane would crash into the mountain. That was confirmed once they found the black boxes, but that was the first indication. Wow. Okay. So how do airlines view this? View this? Do they see them as allies? Well, a lot of airlines use it uh, today. Um, uh, you walk into an airline operations center, you you can at many airlines you can see the flight radar 24 display um, up there. Airports use it. Um, it, it. Ramp workers use it to track incoming planes. Um, obviously, uh, people use it to track their flight or track a loved one's flight. Um, uh, drivers use it to pick up people. There are all kinds of uses. Uh, Boeing and Airbus both use it in their operation centers uh, to track their planes. And in a couple of emergencies, air traffic controllers have resorted to it. Okay. Do they make money right now? I mean, they're so popular, you would think they do. Yeah, well, they say they're they're profitable. They they actually used uh, they so they had this uh, kayak like uh, ticket search site um, which they sold. They split the company in two once the flight tracking um, uh, got so popular. Split the company in two, sold the uh, ticket selling service, ticket search service, and used that money to fund the manufacture of all these little receivers. Um, they're about five hundred to six hundred dollars a piece when you include shipping. Um, so they have been uh, completely self-funded. Um, they have a, a good-sized business. They have headquarters in Stockholm with a bunch of programmers working there now. 
Um, they sell an app for $3.99, um, which uh, has been very popular. And they're, they're trying to sell premium service to, to commercial companies using it for $2.99 a month. And um, it's available for free, so a lot of companies haven't bothered to, uh, to pay for it. But they, they are making money. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Scott. You always have the great information, especially on the, the price, pricing of flights. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks, Lee.